Hello and welcome to Bite My Pie. You've no doubt heard of Google's Chromecast, the small hockey puck shaped device that lets you beam content from a smartphone or tablet to your big screen TV. In this video we'll be looking at another way of doing this with everyone's favourite little computer. Of course I'm referring to the Raspberry Pi. Better yet you can even use the Pi Zero, which is both smaller and even more economical than the standard Raspberry Pi. To do this we'll be using some software appropriately titled RaspPiCast. So if this sounds of interest to you, stick around. Before we get stuck in let's first mention a couple of caveats. Unfortunately RaspPiCast only works with Android, there is no iOS Apple version. Also, I don't believe it works with DRM or Digital Rights Management. That means you won't be casting any content from the likes of Netflix or Amazon Prime Video to your television. But for beaming photos, videos or even music stored locally on your Android device, you'll be good to go. Raspi Cast also works well with YouTube. OK, with that out of the way, let's crack on. Let's have a quick word about the hardware. If you plan on using a Pi Zero, I'd suggest going with the Pi Zero W, which is the wireless version and the one I'll be using for this project. Otherwise you'll need extra adapters to connect it to your home network. This isn't an issue with a full size Raspberry Pi. You'll also need a suitable power supply. The Pi Zero uses a micro USB connector for its power input. As you can see in the illustration, it's the one on the right hand side of the board. Next up is a micro SD card. The Raspberry Pi's official website recommends a minimum size of 4GB for Raspberry Pi OS Lite, which is the operating system we'll be using. The last part required for your Pi is a HDMI cable. If like me you're using a Pi Zero, this is a mini HDMI to standard HDMI lead. Or you could use an adapter to connect to a standard HDMI cable. Although optional, I'd also recommend getting a case for your Raspberry Pi. Obviously you'll want a television to cast your media to, and an Android device to do the casting. I'll also be using a Windows PC to carry out the initial setup, but you could just as easily do this on a Mac or a computer running Linux. Right, let's go grab the software. If you open a web browser and search for Raspberry Pi, and we're going to head for raspberrypi.org. From the website's homepage, head for software, and if we scroll down the page, we're going to download the Raspberry Pi Imager. I'm going to grab the Windows version and save that to my downloads directory. Once you've downloaded it, you can close the web browser. And then let's find it in File Explorer. If you're on Windows, double click the program to start the installation wizard. And click on Yes to proceed. Then click on Install. Though the installation method may vary depending on what operating system your computer is running, the Raspberry Pi Imager shouldn't be difficult to install. Let's close File Explorer, and now that the software is installed, click Finish to launch the program. If you haven't already, connect your micro SD card to your computer, and then click on Choose OS. We're going to select Raspberry Pi OS Other, and then we want Raspberry Pi OS Lite. Next you need to click on choose SD card and from there we're going to select our micro SD card and then click on write. As it tells us this will erase all the existing data on the memory card so when you're happy to continue click yes. It's now copying the Raspberry Pi OS Lite operating system onto the micro SD card. The perfect opportunity to grab a coffee. Once it's finished we can remove the memory card and close the program. Then you need to reconnect your micro SD card. If you get this message about there's a problem with this drive, just ignore it. Even though Microsoft now loves Linux, Windows doesn't like one of the file systems we've created on the memory card. But don't worry as what we need to do will still work. So open File Explorer and click on this newly created boot drive. To save having to attach a keyboard and mouse to the Raspberry Pi, as this would require another adapter if using the Pi Zero, we're going to set up a remote connection so that it can be accessed over our home network. To do this you need to right click anywhere in the white space inside the boot drive and then select New Text Document. 
Then call this empty file SSH and press enter. Next we need to create another new file. So right click in the white space again and choose new text document. We're going to call this one WPA underscore supplicant dot comp and then press enter and we're going to double click on this one to open it. We're going to type a few lines of text in here to automatically join our Raspberry Pi to our Wi-Fi network. So the first and longest line is CTRL underscore interface equals DIR in capitals equals again forward slash VAR forward slash run forward slash WPA underscore supplicant space group in capital letters equals NETDEV. This line will set our wireless configuration when the Raspberry Pi boots. NetDev is the group responsible for managing network interfaces. OK, one line down, six to go. So press enter to continue with the second one, which is update underscore config equals one. This line will write our wireless settings to the correct location so that they're stored permanently. Press enter and let's enter the next part. This is country equals followed by the two digit code for your country, which in my case is capital GB for Great Britain. If you're in the United States, this would be capital US. Or to find other country codes, you can check out the link in the video description. Right, the next line is network equals opening curly bracket. So if we press enter, we're about to input our wireless network's credentials. Tap the tab key on your keyboard to indent the following line and then type SSID equals quote and you need to enter the name of your wireless network, which in my case is byte my pi and then put another set of quotes after it. If we press enter, we're on the sixth and penultimate line and again we're going to press the tab key to indent this one as well. Then type PSK equals quote and you need to enter your wireless key. And add another set of quotes to the end. Then the seventh and final line is simply a closing curly bracket. You'll notice that because I'm on Windows this has been done in Notepad. But if you're using a different operating system any basic text editor should do. And when you've entered your wireless configuration, make sure you save it and then you can close your text editor. You should now have two text documents, SSH and WPA supplicant. But in order for them to work correctly on the Raspberry Pi, we don't want them to be text documents as they're actually config files. To change this, if you click on the view tab and then tick the file name extensions box, this allows us to see the TXT extension on those two files. And if you right click on each one in turn and choose rename, you can use your cursor keys to move to the very end of the line and then delete the .txt and press enter. Windows doesn't like you tampering with file name extensions so you get this warning message. But that's fine, just click on yes to change it and then do the same thing to the other file. and change that one as well. And with that done, you should be looking at SSH and WPA underscore supplicant dot conf with no dot txt file extension on either of them. If you're using Windows, before you close File Explorer, remember to go back into the View tab and untick the file name extensions box, and then you can close the window. Great, with that done, you can remove the micro SD card from your computer. The time has now come to boot the Raspberry Pi. Plug in its micro SD card, hook up the HDMI cable to your television, connect the power supply and turn everything on. Eventually it will reach the login prompt, but it may not have finished loading, so give it a moment longer. When the text finally stops scrolling up the screen, you should be ready to go. Back on my Windows PC, I'm now going to see if my Raspberry Pi is accessible on my home network. And for that I need to open the command prompt. If you're using a Mac or Linux you can do this in the terminal. We'll start by seeing if we can reach our Raspberry Pi by issuing a ping command. So type ping space Raspberry Pi and press enter. Hopefully you also got a reply. 
but if not, don't panic. Depending on the setup of your home network, it may not respond to its Raspberry Pi hostname, and you may need to use its IP address instead. So let's take a look at how to do just that. In order to use the Pi's IP address, we first need to know what that is. And one of the easiest ways to find it is by using a free Android app called Fing. So here on Android, I'm going to open the Play Store and search for Fing, F-I-N-G. It's this one, Fing Network Tools by Fing Limited. Let's install that. And then we can open the app. Tap next on the welcome screen. You can review the privacy settings or just agree and continue. And then enable location so that the app displays all the information. And tap on allow. And if your device's location isn't already enabled, OK that as well. And then tap on enable location again. You can sign up for a Fing account if you want to, but you don't need one. So I'm going to tap I'll think about it. And then I'm going to choose maybe later. If you look down at the bottom, we need to select Home. And you can see that I'm already connected to my Bite My Pi Wi-Fi. Obviously, both your Raspberry Pi and Android device need to be on the same wireless network. And now we can tap the big Scan for Devices button. If you can't see all of the devices on your network, swipe up to look at the rest. And there it is, my Raspberry Pi with an IP address of 192.168.0.52. So jot down whatever yours is. And that's it, you can close the app. Now that I know the IP address of my Raspberry Pi, if I return to the command prompt on my Windows computer and clear the screen with a CLS, I'm going to try pinging my Pi again, but this time with its IP address. So that will be ping space 192.168.0.52 and press enter. And even if you didn't get a reply last time with the Raspberry Pi's host name, all being well it should be replying now on its IP address. So let's clear the screen again and we're going to remote into our Raspberry Pi. To do this we're going to use the SSH command which will provide a secure connection to the Pi. So type SSH space the username of the account on the Raspberry Pi which is just Pi at and then depending on which one you're using you can either enter the host name of Raspberry Pi or the Pi's IP address. I'm going to go with the latter, which for me is 192.168.0.52 and then press enter. As this is our first time connecting we need to type yes and press enter to accept the connection and then we need to type in the Raspberry Pi's password which is just lowercase raspberry and press enter again. You can tell that we're logged in as the command prompt has changed to pi at raspberry pi and the first thing I'm going to do is clear the screen by typing the word clear and pressing enter. Now as you just discovered, currently the Pi's password is set to Raspberry, which isn't very secure. So let's change that now. And we can do that by entering the command P-A-S-S-W-D. You need to type in the current password, which is Raspberry, and press enter. Then type in your new password and enter it again to confirm it. Regardless of whether you're currently connected to your Raspberry Pi using its IP address or not, you need to make sure that it doesn't change. And to do that, we're going to give it a static IP address. First, we need to find the name of our wireless interface, as that's what we're using to connect to our home network. So type the command IP space A to list the network interfaces. So here we've got WLAN0, and I know it's the interface I'm looking for because it's got the IP address 192.168.0.52 that I found earlier. So remember WLAN0 or whatever your wireless interface is called. To set a static IP address we need to open a network configuration file within Raspberry Pi OS. We'll be using the sudo command as this requires admin rights. And I'll be using the nano text editor. But if you prefer a different one by all means use that. So the command is sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash dhcpcd.conf and press enter to open the file. Use the cursor keys on your keyboard to scroll down to the bottom. What we're looking for is the example static IP configuration section. And rather than typing it out again we can modify these lines to suit our purpose. 
So first use your cursor keys to move down to the line starting interface. At the moment all of these lines are what we call commented out. You can see this because they start with the hash symbol. That means anything typed after the hash, or pound sign if you're in the US, is ignored by the computer. This is useful for programmers to be able to add descriptive comments about their code, or in this case to include a sample static IP configuration. So to make the line active we simply need to remove the hash, and you can do that by pressing the delete key on your keyboard. Next we need to set the correct name for the network interface. So if I use my cursor keys to move along the line, I'm going to remove ETH0 and in its place add the name of my wireless interface. So pop yours in here. If we uncomment the next line this is where we add our static IP address. I'm going to change this to 192.168.0.150 and I need to put a slash 24 on the end. So set yours to a suitable address for your home network. If you're not familiar with IP addresses you may want to check out my static IP video. I've put a link in the description. We don't need an IPv6 address so we can skip past the next line. If you uncomment static routers you need to set this to the IP address of your router and it just so happens that it's already correct for me. Again if you're not sure what the IP address of your router is instructions on how to find it are included in my static IP video as is information on domain name servers which is what we need to set on the next and final line. So let's uncomment that one. I'm going to delete the IPv6 address from the end of the line. If I left it like this it would use my router's IP address, in other words my internet service provider as the main DNS server and Google as an alternative. But as I don't want either of those I'm going to delete them both and go with 1.1.1.1 which is Cloudflare instead. So enter the domain name servers you'd like to use. With your settings entered, hold down the control key on your keyboard and press X. Then type Y and press enter to save the changes. With that done, it's a good idea to restart your Raspberry Pi. And you can do that by entering sudo space reboot. Give it a moment to restart and then we're going to log back in using ssh space pi at and then the new static IP address that you just set, which in my case is 192.168.0.150. Press enter, and because we've changed the IP address, we'll have to type yes and press enter again, and then pop in your new password. We're now ready to start turning the Pi into a Raspi Cast receiver. Before installing any software, it's a good idea to make sure that the operating system's up to date. And on the Raspberry Pi we can do that by running the following two commands. sudo apt update and then sudo apt upgrade. And you can see that there's quite a few packages waiting to be upgraded. So tap Y on your keyboard and press enter to continue. This may take a while so I'll pause the video and come back when it's complete. After upgrading so many packages, it's not a bad idea to do a restart. Once it's finished rebooting, let's remotely reconnect to the Pi and pop in my password. Next we'll need some software which is hosted on GitHub. So the first thing we need to do is install Git. Type Y on your keyboard to continue. We want to make sure that we're in our home directory. If you enter PWD, this stands for Print Working Directory, you can clearly see that I'm in the Pi Accounts home folder. If this wasn't the case, you can type CD space tilde and press enter to get there. And if you type PWD again, even if you weren't before, you should now be in the right place. Then we're going to type git space clone space https colon double forward slash github dot com forward slash capital H lowercase double a r i g e r capital H a r a l d forward slash o m x i v 
The git command is going to copy or clone the program's contents from its GitHub repository to our Raspberry Pi. So let's press enter to do just that. With that done we can use the ls or list command to view the contents of our home directory. And if we add a space dash l it will display some more useful information. OMXIV is the OMX image viewer that we just downloaded from GitHub. If you look at the beginning of the line you can see the letter D. This means that OMXIV is actually a directory. So let's use the cd or change directory command again, followed by a space, but this time we're going to use it to enter that new directory. You can tell that we're now inside the OMXIV directory because the command prompt shows our location. And if we wanted to, we could list the contents of this folder. In a moment, we're going to compile the OMX image viewer software so that we can run it. Don't panic, this is much easier than it sounds. But first we need to install a couple of extra packages that the software needs to run. And we can do this with a single command as follows. sudo space apt space install space lib jpeg 8 dash dev space lib png 12 dash dev and enter y to install those. And then type sudo apt install space omx player. And then to y again to install that one. Now let's compile the omx image viewer. So first enter the command make space il client. When that's finished type in make. And with that done, we're going to install it with sudo make install. That's it, our Raspberry Pi is now ready to go. And we can close our remote connection by typing exit and pressing enter. And then close the command prompt. Before we set up the RaspiCast app on Android, let's first take a look at how to copy files onto your Raspberry Pi. This part is optional, but could be useful if you'd like to store content on the Pi itself. If you plan on doing this, I'd suggest using a larger micro SD card to allow for the additional data. Right, let's open a web browser and search for FileZilla. It's this website, FileZilla-project.org. And we're going to download the FileZilla client. I need the Windows 64-bit version, but other platforms are available. And then I'm going to download the standard edition of FileZilla and save that to my downloads directory. Once you've done that, you can close your web browser. And if we go and find the file we just downloaded, we're going to install FileZilla. So let's run through the install wizard. Click on yes to continue. Agree to the license. I'm going to make it available to all users on this computer. I'm going to leave the options ticked and have a shortcut on my desktop as well. I'll let it install the software in my program files directory and keep the program's default name in my start menu. With the install complete, let's open the program. FileZilla will allow us to transfer files from our computer to the Raspberry Pi, but first we need to establish a connection between the two computers. So type your Raspberry Pi's static IP address in the host box. The username is the account on your Raspberry Pi, which is just Pi. Then enter your Raspberry Pi's password. And as this connection uses SFTP, or the Secure File Transfer Protocol, we need to pop the number 22 in the port box. And then you can click on Quick Connect. Since this is our first time connecting through FileZilla, we get this connection message. If you don't want to see this every time you connect, you can tick this box and then click on OK. In FileZilla we have the files on the computer we're on, referred to as the local site, shown on the left hand side, and the files on the Raspberry Pi, referred to as the remote site, shown on the right. You can see that it opens in the respective users home directories ready to copy our files, and if I scroll through the contents of my Byte My Pi Accounts home folder, I've got this YouTube directory. Let's double click that to look inside. Now I could just copy these files straight into my Raspberry Pi's home directory, but it might be better to organise them into folders depending on what type of file they are. 
So let's right click in the white space and create a directory. I'll call this first one pictures and click OK. Then I'll make another one and call this one music. Then lastly I'll create a videos folder. Then all I need to do is drag each of these files into their respective directories. Nocturne is an audio file so that belongs in music. I'm going to click and drag the forest video file into videos and let go. And then I've got two JPEG photos. Rather than copy those individually, if I left click on one and then hold down the control key on my keyboard and left click on the other, I can click and drag them both into pictures. Then when you've finished copying your files to the Pi, you can close FileZilla. It's now time to set up the Android side of things. If we open the Google Play Store, we're going to search for the Raspi Cast app, and it's this one by the developer Benjamin H. So let's install that, and then you can close the Play Store. Open the app. If it's not on the home screen, you may need to find it in the app drawer. And as we want to cast content from Android to our TV, we need to give it permission to do so. Under hostname or IP, enter the static IP address of your Raspberry Pi. So in my case, that's 192.168.0.150. You can leave the username as Pi and also leave it on port 22. Then you need to enter your Raspberry Pi's password that you set earlier. And that's it for the connection settings. You can tap on OK. Raspi Cast is pretty straightforward. You have these two main sections on the left hand side, Files and Cast. Files gives us access to the Raspberry Pi's storage. You can see that we're in the Raspberry Pi's home directory. And here are the three folders that are created, Music, Pictures and Videos. So if you've copied some content to your Raspberry Pi, you can access it from here. Alternatively, we have the Cast section. This is split into videos, music, albums and images and should detect any media on your Android smartphone or tablet. At the top we have a repeat button, a play stream button which you can click on if you know the URL of a stream you'd like to cast. Then we have the stop button that will stop any content that's currently casting. And to the far right we have a drop down menu. From here you can edit the SSH settings that we put in a moment ago. You can also set the audio output. If you've got your Raspberry Pi hooked up to your TV through a HDMI cable, you'll want to leave this on HDMI. Then we have the advanced options. Unless you're having technical problems, I'd probably leave most of this alone. But you do have options like setting YouTube's video quality and switching the app to its dark theme by unchecking this box. And then lastly on the drop down menu, we have help and about. This just tells us a bit more about the app and its license. OK, now that we've familiarised ourselves with the interface, it's time to do some casting. I'll show the display I'm going to cast to, which would usually be your television, as a picture in picture, so that you'll be able to see what's happening on it as I use the Raspi Cast app in Android. Let's start in Files. Remember this is the media stored on your Raspberry Pi. I'm going to start with the photos in my pictures directory and all we need to do is select one and after a tiny delay the photo appears on the screen. From there we can simply click on another image and just like magic the picture changes on the screen and to turn off the casting you simply tap the stop button. Let's have a look at some music next. I copied this Nocturne track to the Raspberry Pi. The procedure is exactly the same, just tap on it to start the casting and then you can stop it in the same way too. And lastly on the Pi we have the videos folder. So let's cast this forest video. And then we can stop the playback. So that's how casting media from the Raspberry Pi itself works. Now let's look at casting the content stored on Android. I'll start with my images first. Once again the steps are exactly the same. Simply select the picture you want to cast and then you can choose another. Let's switch to the music tab. 
and I'll cast this Find Me Here track. And stop that one. If you've got lots of music stored on your phone or tablet, it should also detect the albums. And then last up, we've got the Videos tab. And I can cast my video of a waterfall. And stop it. And that's the Raspi Cast app, but what about casting from YouTube? Well, let's open the app drawer by sliding up from the bottom of the screen, and then open YouTube. Find a video that you'd like to cast to the big yeah, screen. Then if you click on the share link, you have the option to cast to Raspi Cast. Note, you're also able to queue your videos as well. So tap on cast to start the playback. You'll note that it's automatically returned us to the Raspi Cast app to be able to control the casting video. OK, that's enough of that. Once a video has begun playing, you don't need to stay in the app. You can return to it when you're ready to stop the casting. And that's how you can use Raspi Cast to project Bite My Pie onto your big flat screen TV. Before we finish I'd like to cover one last topic. As with any computer you shouldn't just yank the plug out of the socket once you've finished using the Raspberry Pi. This could corrupt the data on the micro SD card and potentially make it unbootable. So instead it's best to shut it down before disconnecting the power. But how do you do that without having a keyboard and mouse connected to it I hear you say? Well since we're already using Android to do our casting, there's another app that will enable us to do precisely that. If you head to the Google Play Store, we're looking for SSH button, and it's this one by David Grutendorst. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. So let's install that, and then we can close the Play Store. Let's open the app, and if you hold down on the demo label, you'll be able to edit it. First, let's give it a more meaningful name. I'm going to go with Power Off. Then we need to enter the command that will do just that, which is sudo space power off. Next to ssh hostname, enter the static IP address of your Raspberry Pi. The ssh username will be Pi, and the ssh password is the password of your Raspberry Pi. Leave the ssh port on 22 and then click OK. And that's it, we now have a button to shut down our Pi. So let's give it a go. As you can see on the screen, it tells us that the command executed OK and gives us the time that it did so. So we can close out of the app. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you've made it this far, thanks for sticking with me. Not only should you now be able to start casting your favorite content onto the big screen, but I hope you've picked up a few useful tips for interacting with your Raspberry Pi along the way. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified when I post the next one, just click the bell icon. Thanks for watching and until next time, take care.